I want to talk to you guys today about the piezoelectric disc. Now, there's some misunderstandings about this, and let me clear them up for you. And it has to do with circuitry and the piezoelectric disc itself. Now, Jared ran this thing. Here's what he came up with. It runs in the kilohertz range when it's on. When it's off, it runs in the megahertz range. This may be very confusing to people. So let's find out what it is. The piezoelectric disc is a transmitter and a receiver. What does that mean? Touch it, and what happens? If you hooked it up to a multimeter, it creates voltage. When you turn it in the opposite direction, and you put power into it, it then transmits. So, how do I answer the fact of what he said? Well, it's what he said is clear as day. When it's on, he's transmitting. When it's off, he's receiving. What is that saying? Somewhere in his gravity flyer, the actual uh, vibration of it is in the megahertz range. That's it. That's as simple as it gets. One point it's a receiver, one part it's a transmitter. What does it also tell me? It also tells me we're using it wrong. The first ultrasound kit Alexi gave had two different spots where you can change things. In the, one, the second one that I got, it only had one and it turned on and off. Where is the flaw in both of this? It's a real simple understanding of circuitry. I want to look at it like it's sound. Say we're looking at an amplifier, right? And, we're, and we simply are looking at a volume on speakers or anything like that. We want to set a frequency. And we know exactly what the frequency is. Now what do you want to do? We'll turn the volume up. That's as simple as it gets. I'm not trying to change the frequency by tuning it. I want to be able to set the frequency, right, with the dial. Then I want to be able to turn another dial and I wanted to be able to take the amplitude of it or the volume of a speaker and amplify that. I want the amount of energy going to it to increase. That's the answer to this question. So what's the difference between the two kits? Well, in the second one, we're just turning it on and off. And while that's great, it's not going to make our cause any better. It's not going to do anything for us. It's simply going to tell us what the actual gravity flyer is doing when you turn it off. What is it doing? It just runs in the megahertz range. There you go. Vibration in the megahertz range. That's where it is. That's as simple as it gets. So what do I want? Again, I'll say it again. If you look at it in terms of putting it through musical equipment, like, a, uh, like an amplifier, all you need to do is set the frequency with one dial. Take the volume with another dial. Turn the volume of that frequency up. We're not changing the song here, guys. All we're doing is changing the volume on the song. Push it up. And that's what I want to do. So if I have a button instead of a volume switch, what do I want? I want that thing cranked all the way up. And when it's cranked all the way up, that's like pushing the button at max value right there. I want to push the button. And I want that actual frequency to spike. And that's the whole thing here. So how does that transla translate into our gravity flyer and why is it working the way that I say it's gonna be working? Well, it comes down to a simple understanding. I have a positive field on the top, neutral field in the center, negative field on the bottom. If all I wanna do is push that positive field down, what am I gonna to need to do? Increase the amount of volume to force it down. I can now force my center plate to be positive. And if I do that, when static electricity hits between two plates, as long as the smaller one's on the bottom, the bigger one's on the top, it gives you force in one direction. That's the answer to the piezoelectric disc. That's what it's for. That's why the circuits are a little bit wrong. And it takes an understanding of circuitry to do this. There's one bright person on my channel that pointed this out to me and it took a little while for me to understand it and go through the circuitry myself. I did not realize the difference between the two until this was really evident to me when I tried to test it. Turning the thing on and off is not going to help me. Not in any way possible. I'm trying to create a suppression. I need that whole top positive to suppress down into the, to the middle disc. 
In order to do that, I need to be able to set the frequency and adjust the volume. I need to be able to put more energy that I want into this thing in order to suppress it further. Now, why is it important to have two dials and then maybe a button that just turns it on and off to that exact volume? Well, because I want to first adjust it. Here's my top plate or my upper disc. Here's my uh, center disc right here. I just want to adjust how much suppression I'm getting. If I want to just push this a little bit, I can push it in between or I can push it all the way down. That's what I'm looking for. I want to know where that is. Now, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to go into the bottom disc of the negative. Again, this ties into your magnets, guys. If you have too much eddy current, you're not going to be able to take the positive from the top disc and put it down to the middle. There's too much force against an, an eddy current going up. So, you have to reduce the eddy current. This also has to do with disc spacing between the center plate and the lower plate. This is exactly where it comes in. If your magnets are too strong, push the center plate down further. That also is going to change your distance in between the center plate and that plate and how much force you can direct up. Why does Alexi use magnets that are not neodymium 52s? Well, it's now become very apparent, isn't it? He does not want that much force in his upper spinning disc. He can't because it will not allow him to get the secondary effect that he needs of taking, I keep calling it suppression, but it's just taking the positive and put it down to the center disc. He can't get that if that eddy current's too high. So what has to happen? He needs to find an equilibrium in here. The center plate to the bottom disc to create a force that goes upward without having any sparks or any problems to it. He needs to reduce the eddy current from the bottom disc that gets in the top disc so that he can use his ultrasound to push it down. And that's his equilibrium point. There's a lot of tuning factors that come into this, but that's okay. As long as we know exactly what each field is doing, we're okay to do it. Now we can start amplifying a little bit. We can start changing the circuit a little bit. There's a faster way to get to everything. Alexi's original design was two dials. The secondary design was a dial and a button. Now what do we need? We need two dials and a button. I want to be able to do this, where I can take this thing and set the frequency that I know gives me the absolute suppression or the absolute pushing of that positive down to the center plate. I want to set that right there. That is my first dial. I'm going to set that in. Now, what do I want to do? I want to be able to crank up the volume and then I want to push a button to turn the volume all the way off. Then I want to be able to push the button to max it out. Now, that's it. I want to be able to hit this abs absolutely right in the center, right dead on in that frequency and amplify the living daylights out of it right there. Why? Because I'm going to be able to take that field and push it down immediately. As soon as I want to, boom, push it down. What happens? You let off the button when you have no more volume in it, and what does it do? It bounces back to an equilibrium point where there's now a positive on the top, negative on the bottom, and neutral in the center again. This is the understanding of this piezoelectric disc. Again, the circuitry is a little off. We are going to have to change it. I don't see any other way around it. I know exactly what I'm looking for, and I look at what Alexi did and what he was messing around with, and this would be the answer that he would take next, the next step he would take. Because if those are the values that you're looking at, this is exactly where you need to go from that point. So, we'll just say it one last time in what we're doing. The piezoelectric disc on the top is a transmitter and receiver. When you turn it off, it's receiving the signal of your gravity flyer in the megahertz range. When you turn it on, it's in the kilohertz range based on the circuit. Now, all we need to do is match up the high voltage coil. The high voltage coil frequency has to be matched up with the ultrasound. That's the tie-in. It's not the Tesla coil. It's the high voltage right here with the ultrasound. Why? Because that's the energy we're trying to move down to the center plate. That's what we're trying to move. Therefore, those two must be in a match, not the Tesla coil. 
So, the Tesla coil is going to be working in a different direction. And I'll explain all that in another video, but this just has to do with that piezo buzzer and what we're looking for. So, how am I going to set it? I'm actually going to take a circuit, put it on my high voltage, and I'm going to actually know exactly what the frequency of that is in kilohertz. Then, I'm going to set my piezoelectric buzzer to the same thing. Now I have my frequencies aligned, right where I want them. Now, I'm going to take the volume, turn it all the way up, with the button pushed down so that it doesn't hit right away. I'm going to release that button and let it boom. It's going to nail this thing with a massive amount of frequency right then and there, at the exact frequency that I want it to. Now, I can suppress that or push that field down in the center. And I can get a lifting factor going up. Guys, this is the understanding of it. If you have any questions about it, let me know. Sometimes this gets confusing. Why is something working in two ways? Well, it's the nature of the beast. If you look at all different experiments with this piezoelectric disc around the internet, they're going to tell you that it's a receiver. They're also going to tell you it's a transmitter. That's the most interesting part of it, isn't it? Everything on this craft not only works in one way, not only works in two ways, not only works in three ways, it's in like a multiple of four or something, or you square something. It is literally off the charts how many interactions are here in such a small little craft. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you like, share, subscribe, do all those fun things. Have yourself a great day, and thank you for watching.